welcome friends to a special episode on cns live as we know heads of 193 countries globally are in new york at the 73rd united nations general assembly to debate on sustainable societies our governments have promised sustainable development where no one is left behind is it possible to dream of a better tomorrow for everyone unless we eliminate war conflicts and find sustainable energy options i'm sure all of us would agree that we need to abolish nuclear weapons as well as use sustainable energy options if we want a better world for everyone but is our military budget increasing or decreasing are we buying more or less arms are we going for sustainable green energy options today in cns live we have ramon maxese awardee dr sandeep pandey amongst us who has led several foot marches and awareness campaigns in india and pakistan he and his supporters took out a global peace march in 1999 from pokhran the nuclear test site in india to sarnath in which i have walked to for some distance in 2005 he led india pakistan peace march from delhi in india to multan in pakistan mobilizing citizens for peace for a nuclear free south asia and also for a visa free south asia and more recently in june 2018 he took a foot march from ahmedabad to india pakistan border in gujarat state demanding nuclear free south asia unstable He is one of the approved participants of UN high level meeting to abolish nuclear weapons. Welcome Dr Sandeep Pandey. Please share your message for a nuclear free world. Thank you. Uh thank you for inviting me to this uh, forum uh to talk about uh, nuclear disarmament on the occasion of the uh, meeting of we can't hear you the world leaders of the nations um, i was supposed to go reason um i hello uh, she says she's not able to hear me now yeah now i can hear you now we can hear okay. you okay so on the occasion of this meeting in new york um, where the world leaders are meeting at uh, united nations uh, to which i was also supposed to go but uh, i am not able to make it for some reason as an observer i was going to attend the meeting on on elimination of nuclear weapons uh, on the 26th um i would like to say that um, it is a very welcome move that uh, nuclear uh, is is again a priority for the united nations uh, because united nations the establishment of united nations uh, was uh, you know on the basis of one of the important points the first point in fact mentioned was complete elimination of nuclear weapons uh but since then we have seen how uh, uh you know country after country and and nine countries in the world have acquired nuclear weapons uh united nations has not been able to accomplish the goal that it set for itself in 1945 uh there have been various kinds of treaties like the comprehensive test ban treaty uh non proliferation treaty fissile material cut off treaty uh these are international treaties and then we have had you know salt and start uh treaties between the united states and the then soviet union we have had nuclear weapon free zone treaties which were regional uh four regions in the world have declared themselves to be nuclear weapons free by signing treaty among themselves so there have been various kinds of treaties uh but they haven't resulted in in uh, a total elimination of nuclear weapons uh the salt and star treaties brought down the number of weapons to about uh, 10000 from 30000 uh but even that is enough to destroy the world you know over a number of times um 
The nuclear weapon free zone treaties um, are more promising because they have prevented the development of nuclear weapons in over 100 countries. Uh, but there are countries which uh, pursued the path of madness. Uh, the five Security Council members have made nuclear weapons, and um, India, Pakistan have tested the weapon. Uh, Israel has made it, and uh, North Korea had it. So, in all, nine countries have the technology. Iran is on the way of making it, uh, but uh, it hasn't tested it yet. Uh, uh, so, um, it was quite a dismal scenario that everybody was talking about nuclear disarmament, but it wasn't actually happening. So, the um, resolution in the uh, United Nations for banning the nuclear weapons uh, was a very welcome development, uh, although it did not uh, involve the participation of the nuclear weapon states. Uh, but, uh, you know, the countries of the world came around and said that this, this weapon should be banned. And uh, another positive development which has taken place recently is the uh, unilateral decision by North Korea to dismantle its nuclear weapons program. And uh, it has extended <laughs> a hand of friendship to the United States. The meeting of head of states of United States and North Korea has already taken place. Another was, one is in the offing. And recently, the uh, head of states of the two Koreas met and they spend a considerable amount of time together. And uh, the North Korean head of state has repeated again his commitment to uh, completely wind up the nuclear weapons program of North Korea. Uh, so uh, this is very important development because we have seen that various kinds of treaties, especially among the uh, uh, or in which the nuclear weapon states are involved, are not helping us. The, uh, in spite of the non-proliferation treaty saying that the nuclear weapon is, it, it prevents other than five uh, Security Council members from developing nuclear weapons, but it also says that the big five will ultimately uh, wind up their nuclear weapons. But it hasn't happened. And similarly, the START and the SALT treaties also brought down the numbers, but they did not completely eliminate the nuclear weapons. So it looks like that the North Korean way, that is, <coughs> countries unilaterally deciding to disarm, is the way to go about. And if the other countries can be inspired by the North Korean uh, initiative, uh, I think the, the uh, ideal of nuclear nuclear disarmament can be achieved. <coughs> and I don't see any reason why the North Korea, South Korea example cannot be replicated between India and Pakistan. After all, these two countries are also, they have a similar culture, they share a number of things which are common, and uh, they can talk to each other uh, uh, in their own language, and uh, they uh, are in a position where they can reach a decision to disarm themselves completely uh, because we have seen that even though our soldiers continue to die at the borders, but uh, whenever the head of states or the, uh, the security ch chief advisors or the intelligence chiefs, two retired intelligence chiefs of the two countries have written a book together. Now, what can be more uh, a better example of uh, you know cooperation? So, if the elite of the two countries can cooperate whenever they want, uh, why can't they could, they take a decision to to uh, completely nuclear disarm themselves and also establish a friendship, uh, establish peace between themselves, and until that ideal is achieved, they can at least take a decision like India and China have done, that they will not kill each other's soldiers. It is an unspoken, unwritten agreement, but we know that no soldiers die on the either side of India-China border. So a similar agreement needs to be achieved between India and Pakistan. And in the long run, we hope that the two countries, uh, you know, will uh, achieve the ideal of nuclear disarmament and make, make 
uh, South Asia also a nuclear weapon free zone like the South America, the Africa, the South Pacific and the Central Asia and Mongolia, a single country which has committed itself to nuclear disarmament. So uh, that is the path to take. And in response to uh, Shobha Shukla ji's uh, question, whether sustainable development is possible without, uh, uh, you know, without nuclear disarmament, my answer is no, because India and Pakistan both have been spending, uh, you know, more than uh, education and health combined on their defense. And if such huge amount of resources go into defense, then the vast majority of your population will remain impoverished, will remain illiterate, and will not be able to enjoy the fruits of development. Therefore, in order to uh, achieve the objective of sustainable development, it is necessary that the defense budgets of the two countries are slashed. And uh, we welcome the decision by Imran Khan government to uh, you know, give up uh, palatial housings for the prime minister and the governors. Uh, they are slashing their lavish budget on uh, the housing and the maintenance of those houses, expensive houses. I think similarly, the two countries should take a decision to slash their defense budgets also, because those are also wasteful expenditures, just like lavish living. And uh, they should take moderate positions and they should take a uh, path of peace, they should take a path of dialogue, and I'm sure it can be achieved. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pandey. I have a question. Uh, what do you have to say about the need for nuclear energy? Our energy needs are increasing every day. Uh, is it sustainable to go in for nuclear energy, as many of the people think? See, most of the developed world is on the path of giving up nuclear energy. <clears throat> the United States uh, has 104 nuclear power plants at this time. It doesn't know what to do with the radioactive waste. The waste is being stored in uh, drums on the power plant sites. They have chosen the site in Nevada to dump the nuclear waste, but the local people protested and it never happened. Uh, most of the Europe has also decided not to pursue the path of nuclear energy and Japan after the Fukushima accident closed down all its nuclear power plants. So if you look at the trend, <clears throat> the trend is to move away from nuclear energy towards uh, renewable energy and uh, Europe has uh, committed itself to become a low carbon society by 2050. Um, India and China have been pursuing the nuclear path. Uh, we have entered into negotiations with uh, different uh, nations and their respective companies to set up nuclear power plants. But let me tell you that the Indian nuclear power <coughs> um, generation history is not a very promising one. In so many years after independence, we have been able to develop just a capacity of about 3% contribution to uh, electricity from nuclear power. And all our plants are not working properly. The, the plant with the biggest capacity uh, of 6,000 megawatt in uh, uh, Kodam Kulam, um, there was a huge movement of fisher folk against this plant. Uh, but right now the plant is not working. It is, uh, you know, it was started uh, because it, it was uh, a matter of prestige from the, for the Indian government and the Russian government. But I believe that uh, they are using outdated technology. They are, once an expert was flown in from Bosnia or somewhere, you know, in Europe to fix the plant, but they, but they couldn't do it. And uh, the plant has had, uh, you know, problems and it is not able to run properly. <clears throat> the other nuclear power plants also, their capacities are very small and um, they also have had problems. 
So I think uh, uh, looking at the amount of money which has been invested in nuclear power, if we were to invest the same amount of money in uh, renewable energy, for example, this coast of Tamil Nadu uh, has about two to three thousand megawatt generation capacity from the windmills. There are windmills located inside the Kodam Kodam nuclear power plant. So uh, India, just like the other countries, developed countries are now uh, tapping their renewable resources. And especially because, uh, you know, we are a tropical country, we have sun available all around the year, except for some period in the monsoon. Uh, we uh, are in a better position to utilize solar energy. We should look at the renewable options and develop the renewable energy sector. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Sandeep, for your insightful take on the need for a nuclear weapons-free world for peaceful and sustainable societies. Friends, this online session was streamed live on Facebook and YouTube also. Goodbye till we meet again.